week with Flying Eagle is about the City of Edmonton's Flying Eagle program and it's a free drop-in program about Aboriginal cultures and heritage. So do you guys go to the Green Shack? Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay well this is a little bit about the Green Shack too. All summer I've been going to the Green Shack program at the playground near my house. This morning my Green Shack leader introduces us to two new leaders from the Flying Eagle program. They're wearing blue shirts just like my Green Shack leader and they'll be leading activities with us for the whole week. The new leaders tell us that the Flying Eagle program teaches kids about Aboriginal culture. They say that Aboriginal means the people who first lived on this land. They include First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. My next door neighbor says that she is Métis and two brothers tell us that they are Inuit. Our leaders tell us about the medicine wheel. They say that each nation has its own colors, but that the Cree people of Treaty 6, where Edmonton is, use blue, white, red, and yellow, and that these colors represent the different people of the earth. So they ask us about our heritage, and one kid says he is Somalian, and one kid says he is part Ukrainian and part Irish. A few say they are Chinese. I don't know what I am. We all have lots of fun playing together all day. At supper time, I tell my family about my day at Flying Eagle. I ask my dad what we are. He says, do you mean what is our heritage? I nod. He points to a beaded flower on the wall and says, I am Cree and your mum is Dene. We are First Nations. Our people are known for our beautiful beadwork, and we are proud to be Aboriginal. On Tuesday morning, I bring my little sister with me to the playground. The leaders take us on a bison hunt, but we don't hunt real bison. We just pretend to. We practice our aim by throwing sticks through a rolling hoop. That's a fun game. Have you guys ever tried to do that? No, no you should try it. It's fun. After the bison hunt, we make some mini drums. Our leaders tell us that the drum is the heartbeat of the people. When I am finished making my drum, I help my sister with hers. Later on, we make some totem poles. We pick animals that make us think of our family members, and we draw pictures of them on a paper towel roll. I draw a puppy for my little sister because she's so cuddly, and a spider for myself because I'm good at making things, and I draw a bear to be my mum because she takes good care of us. And a fish for my dad because he loves fishing. My sister mostly draws scribbles, but she tells me she is drawing a fish and a cat. My sister and I are excited to show our totem poles to our family when we get home. My dad is proud of us and puts them on the counter. He shows us a picture of him and a real totem pole from where he uh, traveled to BC. He tells us that Cree and Dene people do not build totem poles, but Aboriginal people near the oceans in British Columbia do. He says that the animals, like the ones in the totem poles, teach us many important things. On Wednesday morning, we make dream catchers. Our leader tells us that Anishinaabe were the first Aboriginal people to make dream catchers. They catch bad dreams in the web, and the good dreams float down the feathers to us. While we work on our crafts, our leaders tell us about the seven sacred teachings of the Anishinaabe. Humility, honesty, respect, courage, wisdom, truth, and what do you think the seventh one is? Love. Love, absolutely. I decide to give my dream catcher to my grandma so I can show her how much I love her. After lunch, one of the leaders says, we're going to smudge. Smudging is one of the ways that Aboriginal people connect with the Creator. Our leader sets out a little metal pan and puts a braid of long grass that he calls sweet grass inside. She lights the sweet grass and it starts to smoke. The smoke smells sweet. I ask the Creator for good thoughts, good words, and good feelings as I wave the smoke over myself. Our leader says that each person can ask for the same thing in their own way. After smudging, we get to have a fire. Our leaders show us how to make bannock. We roll the dough into a ball 
and put it on the end of a stick and roast it over the fire like a marshmallow. It's delicious. It tastes like soft, warm bread. I put honey all over mine, which gets a bit messy, so I have to lick it all up. When we come home, my dad takes a deep breath in as he hugs me and asks me if I was smudging today. How did he know? He tells me he can smell the sweet grass on my clothes. I fall asleep to the smell of sweet grass smoke that is still on me. On Thursday, we play some neat games from the Arctic. Our leaders tell us that the Inuit people made up these games a long time ago, but they still play them. Everyone's favorite game is Butt Bump, where we try to bump each other off balance using our butts. We all laugh a lot together. I think my son and my daughter play that with each other. I'll have to tell them what it's called. After the hand games, we make Métis sash crafts by braiding colorful pieces of yarn together. Each of these colors means something important to the Métis people, like green, which stands for growth and success. Weaving all the colors together shows how the Aboriginal people and European cultures of the Métis people are woven together, just like this. And this crest here is the Métis symbol. Afterwards, the leaders let us try on real Métis sashes. The boys wear their sashes around their waists, and the girls wear them over one shoulder. In the afternoon, we play lacrosse. It's kind of like hockey, except that we have to throw a little ball using a stick, and we run around instead of skate. I'm a very fast runner, but using the stick is tricky. I score a goal on one of the leaders, though. She tells us that Aboriginal people invented lacrosse. Cool. My friend can't run as fast as me, but he's better at catching the ball. My dad picks me up early from Flying Eagle to go to Aboriginal Family Night. I tell my friends they're all about the games we played and the crafts we made at Flying Eagle. One of my friends says that Flying Eagle will be at the playground near his house next week, and his mom says that I can go with him if I want. I can't wait. On Friday morning, I head to the playground for the last day of Flying Eagle at my playground. We're playing hide-and-seek game called Eagle Eyes, my favorite game on the playground when it starts to rain. Our leaders tell us that the rain is a blessing and we should be happy about it. I'm happy because I love to play in the puddles. After lunchtime, one of our leaders teaches us some words in Cree. Tanse means hello, and a miskwichi waskahikan Amiskwichi Waskahikan is the Cree name for Edmonton. That one's a little hard to say. Can you guys say Tanse? Tanse. Tanse. Some of the other kids in the group teach us how to say some words in their own languages. This is fun. Just before we go home, we have a talking circle where everybody gets to say what they thought about the week. Sometimes I talk slowly, but I like that nobody rushes me when I'm holding the feather in the talking circle. I give my leaders a hug at the end. When I go home, my grandpa and grandma are there, and they're visiting us for the weekend. I tell them all about my week at Flying Eagle. My grandma gives me a hug when I give her my dream catcher and says, I'm glad you've had a chance to learn about Aboriginal culture while you were having fun in a safe place. That's something all kids deserve. She's right. I'm going to tell all my friends about Flying Eagle. Did you like that?